ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this edition of Fleet Project. I'm your host, Rex Baer, and it is August 5th, 2016. Now, nice day today out here in San Antonio. Radiation levels are relatively low at 0.1 microsieverts per hour. I went outside, had a nice bike ride, helped the neighbor down the street with a garage sale, and didn't really notice any chemtrails, saw a few clouds, pretty much blue skies. And I just wanted to give a shout out to our producer here at The Leak Project, Kristen. She is just doing a fantastic job booking guests at a very high caliber. And we have a show later today, folks, that I am so excited to be a part of. We've got Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, with us. Tomorrow, we're going to be speaking with Jordan Maxwell. I sometimes refer to him as the godfather of conspiracies because he's been uncovering the agenda of these dungeon masters now for so many years. And then later this week, we've got, actually later next week, I'm sorry, we're going to be speaking with Cliff High from Half Past Human, the developer of the web bots. We're going to get info on the latest reports. And then we've got the incredible Doc Ram, a.k.a. Dr. Richard Allen Miller, and he is writing a new book discussing time travel and scientific data combined with multiple white papers showing what actually happens at physical death and after. Then we've got Ty Bollinger on with us from Cancer Truth discussing big pharma and media manipulation of the disease. We're going to be speaking with Gil Brassard, a go-to source on Planet X, or what he has coined Planet 7X, discussing the latest Planet X news. And we're also going to talk about the New Jerusalem. He's got some really neat slides and information on the New Jerusalem. We're going to talk about that. I see the New Jerusalem in the Bible and Revelation as almost like the Borg cube, you know, the way that it's described, that's kind of what I envision. So I know that many of you might not appreciate that opinion, but once again, that's just my opinion. So I don't know what it is. I'm agnostic. So most of you know that. Then here's another thing that's really cool is a gentleman by the name of Danny Koch reached out to me the other day. He is an incredible musician. He does a lot of work with the media. He's been, his work's been featured in many trailers, big films. I'm, I'm talking huge Hollywood films, some of the biggest ever. He also does work with TV shows, AAA video games, and I just really appreciate what this guy does. He sent me some of his albums when he heard me talk about how I enjoy listening to the Tron soundtrack, and this stuff's awesome. Made the hair stand up on my arms, so check him out. His name's Danny Koch. His last name is spelled C-O-C-K-E. You can look him up. And then we've also got Chris Kaler on with us later. He is going to be doing a show with us. He's a quantum healer, and we're looking for a few participants to be a part of the show. He wants to help you and send us an email, guestbookings at leakproject.com. You can join us via Skype. Now, recently I spoke with Robert Vecino. He's the founder of terravivos.com. These are incredibly high quality, well-built underground bunkers that look like four-star resorts, literally. And these are multi-million dollar facilities, and you can actually buy shares into these things for about 35,000 bucks. Now, is that a lot of money? Yes, absolutely. Is it a lot of money for what you get? Well, if you're looking for a survival method for long term, if something goes on up here above ground that's so bad and you want to live through the chaos underground or something or somewhere that's not going to be just like walking dead, you know, that is an option. I've read a lot of comments in the videos that we recently did and people are saying there's no way they would want to do something like that. Well, hey, that's cool. I get it. You know, some people, especially when we do these podcasts on Planet X and cataclysms, possible scenarios, doomsday scenarios, there's a lot of people that are looking for ways to protect their family. And I know people that are actually building facilities themselves, uh, you know, kind of half fast because of the amount of money that they have. So I don't get a dime for talking about these things. I just think they're pretty cool. Would I want to live in one for a year? I don't know. But if I had to live underground in a bunker, I mean, these things are pretty nice and I don't have access to these elitist bunkers. I've been reading comments saying that these things are just for the elites and that's not true at all, guys. And what do you consider elites anyway? Calling somebody that's got a lot of money an elite, I think that's given them too much power. I know people that make less than $30,000 a year that, would I, that I would consider far more elite than people that are billionaires out there. So just things to keep in mind. Now, I certainly think we live in an idiocracy reality today. And some of the comments that I read on the podcast that I put together that are just so utterly retarded prove my point with this. Oftentimes, you can clearly tell people leave comments that don't even listen to the podcast. They just throw in their two cents based upon a title that they see 
on a video that's being recommended to them. It's retarded. But let's get into something that I think is really important now. I want to discuss the fun vax, the fundamentalist vaccine. I, I like how they call it fun vax. Let's, let's make it sound exciting, like going to the park or you know, going to a theme park or maybe going skydiving. Hey, guys, do you want to go bungee jumping and then get the fun vax? It'll be exciting. Let's go do it. Well, this is some really interesting material because there was some video footage released a few years ago and it shows this presentation where people are talking about this vaccine that is essentially being tested and was created to get rid of the fundamentalist thinking in the Middle East towards jihadists, essentially. You know, those out there that would do anything based on their beliefs, essentially, is what these people are putting together in this presentation. But there's so much more to it than that. Now, could this be a hoax? Absolutely. And could this be concentrated swamp gas? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it definitely could be concentrated swamp gas. Could this be some type of disinformation campaign to just stir up the pot and, and see what kind of effects essentially will come out of it because of people's thoughts and what they comment and leave? You know, basically like a, I don't know, a beta test, essentially. Something like, remember War of the Worlds, the radio program that came out many years ago, even though they said at the beginning it was a hoax, it still freaked a lot of people out. So maybe that's why this information was released as just an elaborate hoax. I don't know. Could be anything. It could be, like I said, just concentrated swamp gas. But let's talk about it for a minute. The fun vax. What is it? Well, there's a really cool website that you can check out. It's called wanttoknow.info. And right now, as you can see here on the screen share, the Pentagon may vaccinate large populations in the Middle East with what is being called FunVax, a, fen a fundamentalist vaccine. As explained by Pentagon researchers, the FunVax uses an airborne virus to indiscriminately infect populations considered high risk for religious fundamentalism. So, okay, you can write anything on the internet about anyone at any time, right? It's very easy to do. So let's do a little bit more research into this. And this is a great article, by the way. So I appreciate whoever put this together at wanttoknow.info. Now, this right here is essentially one of the viruses that has been manipulated to offset the God gene that it's called. There's a specific name for it or a specific term. It's called the VMAT2 gene, as you can see right here in an article on Wikipedia. It's also referenced as the God gene. And there's been many mainstream news articles that talks about this specific gene that you can read about. There's multiple articles actually so you can just google that god gene and you can read some of the the mainstream articles but this publication right here is from the u.s national library of medicine national institutes and it talks specifically about what this virus does now if you're good at reading medical terms or if you want to spend time to actually take the terms here google them and cross-reference and be my guest essentially it just talks about the delivery method so let's talk about this god gene for a minute what is the god gene what is the hypothesis well, the God gene hypothesis, according to Wikipedia, proposes that a specific gene called the VMAT2 predisposes humans towards spiritual or mystical experiences. The idea has been postulated by geneticist Dean Hamer, or Hammer, the director of the Gene Structure and Regulation Unit at the U.S. National Cancer Institute and author of the 2005 book, The God Gene, How Faith is Hardwired into Our Genes. The God gene hypothesis is based on a combination of behavioral, genetic, neurobiological, and psychological studies. The major arguments of the hypothesis are spirituality can be quantified by psychometric measurements. The underlying tendency to, spiritually, to spirituality is partially heritable. Part of this heritability can be attributed to the gene VMAT2. This gene acts by altering monoamine levels. And spiritual individuals are favored by natural selection because they are provided with an innate sense of optimism, the latter producing positive effects at either a physical or psychological level. So essentially what they're saying is this gene is your connection to source. It's your spiritual gene that helps you connect to higher vibrations, higher consciousness. It's also a big factor in the distribution of dopamine levels, serotonin levels, which are going to have an overall impact on your body, makeup, thought process, feelings, etc. So turning this thing off is almost like turning you into a cyborg. So how do they do it? Well, essentially, this FunVax vaccine, the overall concept of it is to inhibit the VMAT2 gene. And as it says right here, as I talked about just a second ago, the ability to facilitate the release of neurotransmitters 
If compromised, these neurotransmitters, such as dopamine, cannot be released via normal transport. Interesting. Now, let's go to another article here. This is supposedly one of the release documents, Quarterly Fundbacks Review. Is this legit? I don't know. This could be just a big hoax, like I said. But let's take a look at this here for a minute. And it gives us a summary of recommendations and conclusions based on experiments related to this specific vaccine. And it also talks about how it was supposedly only done on animals. Let's take a look at the way that they transmitted it here. Okay, so airborne, that's one way. And it talks about the different strains that were tested on 1,200 mice. Oh, how nice of you guys. Now, dispersal options here, aerosol, water. Where's that here? There we go. Okay. High altitude release, water supply release, insect transmission, diffusion by a ground level object, such as a car, diffusion from a stationary object, such as a bottle, and infection of food supply, such as cattle or produce. It even gets into the miles per hour while driving a vehicle or releasing it from the air, the amount that's needed. This is some interesting stuff. So you can see this at wanttoknow.info slash health slash funvax. The article is there. You can read it for yourselves. Now, this is an article that was put together on funvax.wordpress.com. And this was posted April 2011. It's a few years old. And this is basically an interview that was done with Joey Lombardi. I think he's the original whistleblower of these fun vax documents and videos. So you can actually read the transcribed conversation here at funvax.wordpress.com. So that's pretty interesting. He talks about how he got access to this data. Now, this is an article that came out on nanowork.com. This talks about how researchers have designed nanoparticulates that can transport basically pharmaceuticals that thwarts brain cancer in rats. So nanotechnology can be used for good or bad. And this is just kind of confirming how nanotechnology can be used to transfer certain agents to cause certain reactions. Now think about this. If you get into this, it talks about how some of these therapies are done. And these things can actually be activated by lights, by magnets, via Wi-Fi. So as I've talked to you guys about before, if they're spraying this stuff in the atmosphere or if they're spraying specific materials in the atmosphere that gets lodged into people, wouldn't it be a possibility to just push a button and activate a certain vibrational frequency, light or magnet within a certain proximity that you are at if they wanted to cause a specific response. Well, here's the scientific data. You can read about it right here. It's very interesting stuff. Now I'm going to go to another article here. ec.europa.eu slash health slash scientific dash communities. Nanotechnologies. Can nanoparticulates interact with living organisms? Yes. <laughs> of course they can. Which characteristics of nanoparticulates or nanoparticles are relevant for health effects? These are some of the questions asked. What are the health implications of nanoparticles used as drug carriers? How should harmful effects of nanoparticles be assessed? What are the effects of nanoparticles on the environment? Well, these are great questions. Now, let me just give you a quick description here. Which characteristics of nanoparticles are relevant for health effects? Well, first of all, the characteristics of nanoparticles that are relevant for health effects are size, chemical composition, shape. Think about this. The size of these things are so small that in addition to being able to cross cell membranes, reach the blood and various organs because of their very small size, nanoparticulates, nanopartic nanoparticles of any material have a much greater surface to volume ratio. Now think about that for a minute. The larger particles of the same material or then larger particles of the same material. Therefore, relatively more molecules of the chemical are present on the surface. That's going to have a big impact. The toxicity of nanoparticles depends on their chemical composition. Well, duh. The shape, although there is little definitive evidence the health effects of nanoparticles are likely to depend also on their shape. Well, I mean, I think that's debatable. I'll bet you there's plenty of evidence, right? That you can determine what kind of effects a specific shape will have. Now think about how effective symbols are on our subconscious mind and how effective certain things like a properly built pyramid built to Cheops specifications aligned magnetic north, the properties of that specific shape 
are incredible. You can read about it via Pyramid Power with Pat Flanagan. Or what about Feng Shui? It's pretty cool stuff. It's not new age either. It's been around a lot longer than most people think. So these are things to consider. Now let's also go to, this is something that I pulled up on modernfarmer.com. And the article is called Everything You Need to Know About Nanopesticides. Oh, that's just fantastic. If Roundup wasn't enough, now let's make it even more deadly with nanopesticides. Tiny particles, big questions. Yeah, I've got some questions. I don't want this stuff sprayed anywhere around me. I mean, if pesticides are bad enough, now they're going to be so small they go directly into your bloodstream, bypassing almost every filter. So this is just talking a little bit about it. You can read the article here at modernfarmer.com. You can see this graphic that's from the Food and Environment Reporting Network. The many unknowns of nanopesticides. Here's another article, Friends of the Earth. This talks about how nanomaterials are being used in hundreds of consumer products, from toys to clothes to toothpaste. Nanotechproject.org, an inventory of nanotechnology-based consumer products introduced on the market. You can browse products by name, category, company, country. Here we go. Bellstein slash journals.org. The document marketing and distrib distribution of nano enabled products into the commercial marketplace. Here we go. The revised inventory was, was released in October 2013. It currently lists 1,814 consumer products from 622 companies in 32 countries. Oh, fantastic. The health and fitness category contains the most products, 762, 42% of the total. Silver is the most frequent used, frequently used nanomaterial. Well, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. If there's going to be a nanoparticulate in my body, silver would be the preferred one. But here's what spooks me. 49% of the products included in this test do not provide the composition of the nanomaterial used. <laughs> That's insane. So it could be anything. They're not telling us. Almost half of the products with nanotechnologies in them, guys, they're not even telling us what's in it. Wonderful. Directly into your bloodstream. Now, you can also just type in microbeads and toothpaste and look at all these articles that talk about little microscopic nanoplastic beads in toothpaste. Oh, thank you, Crest. Really appreciate that. They've even passed laws that by, I think, 2017, this isn't going to be allowed. Here's an article. P&G removing PE microbeads from its Crest brand toothpaste. Completely removed from its dental products by 2016. Why didn't you do it right away is what I want to know. Or why did you even allow this stuff in there in the first place? With all the billions of dollars you spend in research, you think you'd know this kind of stuff. In my opinion, it means you just don't give a damn. Now, here, here's the bill. With a bill signed into law June, Illinois, Illinois sorry, has a statewide ban on microbeads and personal care products with the phase-out beginning in 2017, a complete ban by 2019. Nearly 20 formations of P&G companies, Crest Toothpaste, now have PE microbeads. 20 of them! And you guys are mad at me for doing a show on an underground bunker that looks like a four-star resort that you don't have to be a millionaire to live in. What does that tell you about society, folks? What does that tell you about somebody that wants to wake people up? Welcome to my world. Make sure to go to leakproject.com. If you log in to Leak Project, you can actually do it for free. Set yourself up a profile here, and you'll get access to exclusive content you can get discounts on Gerald Clark's products, Krista Clark at artisticvegan.com. Just use the code LEAKPROJECT and get a 10% discount. Make sure to check out Juice Plus. Click on the banner on our homepage of Leak Project. This will give you an idea on what Juice Plus is. I love this stuff. I've got the three blend here. So I've got over 20 fruits and vegetables in these pills. So I don't have to worry as much about getting six to eight servings of organic raw fruits and vegetables daily. That's still nice to have as well, but this is a good supplement. 
I don't like your typical vitamins. Most of the vitamins out there are synthetic, and even the ones that aren't that have 5,000% vitamin C and 20,000% vitamin whatever, this stuff, in my opinion, is a lot more natural. I've been taking it since 2013. I love it. I think it's great. So make sure to check this link out. Just click the banner on our homepage on Leak Project. It'll just tell you a little bit about it. It's good stuff. And also... Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Check out our new YouTube channel, William Wallace YouTube. We update videos daily. I appreciate all of you guys that have been a part of this and make sure to have a wonderful day. Be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I am your host, Rex Baer, and it is August 5th, 2016. Now, nice day today out here in San Antonio. Radiation levels are relatively low at 0.1 microsieverts per hour. I went outside, had a nice bike ride, helped the neighbor down the street with a garage cell, and didn't really notice any chemtrails, saw a few clouds, pretty much blue skies. And I just wanted to give a shout out to our producer here at The Leak Project, Kristen. She is just doing a fantastic job booking guests at a very high caliber. And we have a show later today, folks, that I am so excited to be a part of. We've got Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, with us. Tomorrow, we're going to be speaking with Jordan Maxwell. I sometimes refer to him as the godfather of conspiracies because he's been uncovering the agenda of these dungeon masters now for so many years. And then later this week, we've got, actually later next week, I'm sorry, we're going to be speaking with Cliff High from Half Past Human, the developer of the web bots. We're going to get info on the latest reports. And then we've got the incredible Doc Ram, a.k.a. Dr. Richard Allen Miller, and he is writing a new book discussing time travel and scientific data combined with multiple white papers showing what actually happens at physical death and after. Then we've got Ty Bollinger on with us from Cancer Truth discussing big pharma and media manipulation of the disease. We're going to be speaking with Gil Brassard, a go-to source on Planet X, or what he has coined Planet 7X, discussing the latest Planet X news. And we're also going to talk about the New Jerusalem. He's got some really neat slides and information on the New Jerusalem. We're going to talk about that. I see the New Jerusalem in the Bible and Revelation as almost like the Borg cube, you know, the way that it's described, that's kind of what I envision. So I know that many of you might not appreciate that opinion, but once again, that's just my opinion. So I don't know what it is. I'm agnostic. So most of you know that. Then here's another thing that's really cool is a gentleman by the name of Danny Koch reached out to me the other day. He is an incredible musician. He does a lot of work with the media. He's been, his work's been featured in many trailers, big films. I'm, I'm talking huge Hollywood films, some of the biggest ever. He also does work with TV shows, AAA video games, and I just really appreciate what this guy does. He sent me some of his albums when he heard me talk about how I enjoy listening to the Tron soundtrack, and this stuff's awesome. Made the hair stand up on my arms, so check him out. His name's Danny Koch. His last name is spelled C-O-C-K-E. You can look him up. And then we've also got Chris Kaler on with us later. He is going to be doing a show with us. He's a quantum healer, and we're looking for a few participants to be a part of the show. He wants